Hello, Kidney Warriors! James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach, and this is Dadvice TV Live. Now, for those of you out there who are new, and this is one of your first times here at Dadvice TV, welcome. It is great to have you here. You're going to find the material we discuss helpful, positive, and kind of motivational helping you take control of your kidney disease by focusing on the things that you still have control over, such as, you know, exercise, being healthy, and what you eat. Now, tonight, we are going to talk about anemia, which is a big, giant thing. But before we get to that, I have one quick announcement to make. There currently is a study going on that the people who created the study reached out to me and they're looking for people who are stage four and stage five here in the U.S. to do a quick little phone interview. And they'll pay you $125 if you meet their requirements and do the phone interview. It's a great way to make a couple extra bucks, but also help talk about what it's like with stage four and stage five, which is one of those places where anemia tends to pop up quite often. You can learn more about it. The link right there, right there below me dadvicetv.com slash study. Take a look at it if you're interested. We've had a lot of people already do it, and they told me, hey, we can still do some more um, interviews. So you want to make yourself extra 125 bucks? Go to that link. All right, now let me turn this off. Got that mentioned in there. <laughs> now, for those of you that are new, I forgot to introduce who I am. My name is James, and I am a kidney patient. I was diagnosed a while ago. And I had a lot of symptoms. I pretty much had every symptom, including the one we're going to talk about today, anemia. And like we're going to talk about today, I was able to get control of my anemia, kind of manage it, and even completely eliminate it by adjusting my diet and working very closely with my doctor and a renal dietitian. So let's go ahead and let's welcome our renal dietitian, who's always here every Tuesday evening from Plant Powered Kidneys. Go ahead and say hello to Jen Hernandez. Hey, Jen. Hey, James. Hey, everybody. Good to be back this Tuesday evening and really excited to talk about something that I know a lot of people have questions on. And thankfully, there are quite a bit of things that you can do when it comes to taking care of anemia with your diet. So I'm looking forward to that. But if you've never met me before, my name is Jen Hernandez. I am a renal dietitian. I am a registered dietitian that is also board certified in renal nutrition. And I'm the founder of Plant Powered Kidneys. So you can get a ton of our information on our website at www plantpoweredkidneys.com. And that's where we have our articles, all of our blogs. Every week we put up more content for you guys. We have information about the dietitians that help people focus on a plant-based diet, myself included. And uh, basically that's just our hub of where you can connect with us. You can also find us on Facebook at Plant Powered Kidneys. You can also find us on Instagram at Plant Powered Kidneys. And of course our Facebook group, which is growing and growing and it has been such a wonderful thing to watch grow these past years. Uh, so if you're looking for other people that are focused on including more plants in their diet and you want a really positive environment to be a part of, find our Facebook group, Plant Powered Kidneys, and please join in and say hi to everybody. I guarantee you will be welcomed by a lot of warm welcomes and well wishes your way. So if that's what you're looking for, definitely head over there because that is the group that we hold. Oh yeah. And the Facebook group, everybody, if you are new and you haven't joined it, oh my goodness, you're going to love it. There are so many recipe ideas and people are posting photos. They're posting things that they found out at different uh, stores that fit their renal diet, and they're sharing that information. Lots of variety to help you not be afraid of eating, helping you enjoy making those meals, and you know, it's my favorite thing, eating. <laughs> <laughs> now, tonight's going to be a little bit of a shorter show because Jen has to go a little bit early near the end, so let's go ahead and jump right on in. Can you briefly tell us what is anemia? 
So anemia is essentially when the body doesn't have enough red blood cells and red blood cells are really, really important for us because they help deliver nutrients throughout the body to all of our organs, to our tissues. Red blood cells are the car that takes everything through. It's the semi truck that takes everything through the body to help make sure that our body is getting nutrients. One of those nutrients is especially important, which is oxygen. And just like we need oxygen for breathing, it's because our body needs, needs oxygen to be able to stay alive, to have healthy organs, including the kidneys. The challenge with this related to when we're connecting anemia and kidney disease is uh, a while back, we talked about all the different things the kidneys do. One of the things the kidneys do is make this hormone to produce red blood cells. And so if the kidneys are damaged and they can't make, they can't help with making red blood cells, then there's less red blood cells in our body. And so this is when we have the lower blood cell count and therefore we're not getting enough nutrients to the body, including the kidneys. So anemia, while it is something that's really common with a lot of people with kidney issues, it's also really, really important to be paying attention to and doing what you can to best manage it. Because your kidneys, if you're working on taking care of your kidney health, you want to make sure you're doing what you can to keep those levels up as best as possible so that your kidneys can continue to work and thrive. Yeah, and I never understood what hemoglobins were or the importance of red blood cells until mm -hmm. my kidneys failed and I was suffering anemia. And, you know, when my doctor explained to me, anemia is your body suffocating. You don't have mm -hmm. enough red blood cells that pick up the hemoglobin, take it to the lungs. They're what grab the oxygen that we <gasps> breathe in and take it to every organ of our body. Um, and I was scared to death. I was like, oh my goodness, do you give me an injection of, of hemoglobins or something? He said, no, 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 your body will make it. We just got to give it what it needs so and give you some rest so that you can make them. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the symptoms of anemia, which in my mind is by far the worst problem I suffered through as a kidney patient was having anemia. Yeah. Yeah, well, the number one symptom that a lot of people can relate to, you included, right, James, is a low energy level. You oh. just feel fatigued, you feel drained all the time, and you think there's there's not enough sleep, there's not enough hours in the day for you to get good sleep. It just never seems to help restore you. And that is again because just like you said, James, it's it's this it's this sort of suffocation that your body is running on these low fumes. It's not getting what it needs to help with our energy levels. So that's one of the top uh, symptoms of anemia is that low energy levels. Other ones that people can experience are they can have a shortness of breath and difficulty breathing. Again, if we're thinking about the body is trying to compensate and try to figure out how to help with getting oxygen, you might notice changes like that. Um, you might have difficulty concentrating. Again, your brain is not getting oxygen. You're not being able to think through a lot of things very clearly. You might get headaches as well. And one, as a dietitian, for me, one of the big red flags is a decrease in appetite. If you just oh, yeah. don't seem to be hungry, your appetite's not there and you're like, I know I need to eat. It's been hours since I've ate. I'm just not feeling hungry. That's always, I mean, just kind of putting anemia aside for half a second, anytime you notice a decrease in appetite, that's always a flag of something's going on. Because if you're, if you are active and you are living your life, your yep. body needs to eat. So if you're noticing changes in your appetite, it's definitely a good time to talk to your doctor, maybe ask for that referral to a dietitian to do a little deeper dive into what's going on with your nutritional status. Yeah, and my that weakness and fatigue, just to kind of describe a little bit for anyone out there who has not suffered from anemia, you don't ever want to get to this point. You're going to want to listen to the, what we talk about eating. Um, it's a weakness that you can't get rid of. You can take a nap. You can go to bed. Nothing gets rid of As soon as you wake up, you're already exhausted and tired. And mine was so bad that just getting up out of the bed and walking the few steps across my room, and it's not a mansion, it's just a regular little old house, 
walking to my bathroom right there in the master bedroom, I would mm -hmm. stop, lean on the wall and catch my breath and rest several times. And I remember getting excited when I was finally able to walk to my mailbox and get my mail. Now, this is like a month later that I was mm -hmm. able to get up enough energy to where I could walk to the mailbox. The first time I tried to walk to the mailbox, I made it to the mailbox and I called my wife. I had my phone with me and, and we kind of set this up and I said, okay, I can't get back to the house. <laughs> she comes, gets in her car backs up like 40 feet, picks me up, drives me up the driveway. I rested for a while with the door open, yeah. quite a while before I walked into the house. You know, it was just quite challenging. It is, it's it's a big interrupter for living mm -hmm. life if you have anemia. Mm -hmm. Now, Absolutely. iron plays a, iron plays a big role in this with our kidneys. What is that connection with iron? Yeah, so iron is something that we use in our body. It's a mineral. So it's something that we use in our body for a lot of different roles. It helps with our DNA. It helps with the growth and development. And it's part of hemoglobin. So the hemoglobin is that protein with red blood cells that helps to carry the oxygen. So the iron is used for this process. It's also used to help make myoglobin, which is an, which is basically uh, what is used to get the oxygen over to our muscles. And with the iron, this is something that a lot of people, similar to the low hemoglobin levels, people can experience low iron levels. That's why it's really, really common is just this anemia. There are several different types of anemia, one of which is iron deficiency anemia. So if there's not enough iron that helps with the hemoglobin and myoglobin, then there's this issue. Again, it's just thinking down this pathway of if I don't have enough iron, how am I going to be able to take care of these other factors in, in my body if that's basically the roadblock? So you want to make sure that your doctor checks your iron level. And if you have kidney issues, because this is really related to anemia, this is all connected with one of the roles that the kidney has. Many, if not most or all, I want to say, you want to check with your doctor, but most will get basically their, their iron panel or their complete blood count as part of their testing, as part of their lab tests. So you'll get your serum iron level, you'll get your transferrin, which is another type of iron protein, um, you'll get your TIBC or UIBC um, and your serum ferritin. And these will all be included in that iron panel of which your doctor is going to be assessing your levels to make sure that they're adequate. In some cases, people can have higher iron levels, so it is possible to have too much of a good thing, um, but a lot of people with CKD will tend to be on the lower side of that. So that's why it's really important to talk with your doctor about it because it does require lab testing and your doctor is the one who will be ordering and reviewing that testing with you. Yeah, now when I look at food, and I look for iron, it's always a teeny tiny little number. Um, how much iron does a person need in a day when the food has so little in it? Yeah, it's, there are some things you see like, oh, this, you know, whatever food has 0.2 milligrams. And you're thinking, how in the world, like, how does that make any difference? Well, for, okay, well, I'll say first for men, for the for adult men, so this is like ages 19 above, this uh, the iron amount for day is only eight milligrams for the day. So it's not that much if we're thinking like 2,000 calories for a diet or 80 grams of protein or something like that. We're thinking all these bigger numbers. Eight milligrams per day is what needed for men. For men, for women starting at age 15 because of the menstruation cycle, because we lose blood, there is a higher need of iron, which is 18 milligrams a day. Ooh, and that goes double. up to age, yeah. Yeah, so women have a higher need for iron. Uh, and this goes up till about age 50. If you're pregnant, if you are putting, if you are creating a person and there is a tiny human in your abdomen, you need 27 milligrams per day. You are growing a human. That human needs iron, hemoglobin, all that good stuff. So 27 milligrams a day for pregnant women. For women later in their life, postmenopausal women, it's 
back down to where, where men are at, at eight milligrams per day. So that is when we don't need as much of that replacement. So that kind of gives you a general idea. And again, there is such a thing as too much of a mm -hmm. good thing. And this is what we call the tolerable upper in the tolerable upper intake limit. And that amount, as in, if you go over this amount, you might have some detrimental effects. Like it's not going to be a good thing to be shooting for the stars. And that amount is 45 milligrams per day. So if you're thinking, if I have some, it's great, more must be better. That's not the case. The case, the goal really is to hit that recommended daily allowance um, for your, wherever you're at with your stage of life. Yeah. And too much iron, or at least as you start getting towards that, that upper part, at least for people I've experienced or, or I've ran into, they start experiencing constipation. That seems to be a, a yes. side effect. If you're taking supplements and you're just mm -hmm. taking more iron than you need, um, things mm -hmm. can get backed up a bit. Right. Exactly. So, One of the reasons that you don't want to just keep taking a bunch of it. <laughs> yep. So is iron good for my kidneys since it's good for helping me, you know, prevent anemia? Well, yes and no. So it is really important. Many people will have low iron levels. Again, you don't want to assume that taking an iron supplement or anything like that is going to be fixing the problem. You want to talk with your doctor about what is causing that so that you're doing the right things for your own healthcare. Because if you, again, if you take something that is not appropriate or at the right dose, that can be really unhealthy for you. And there are people with kidney issues, um, especially people who are on dialysis. And I saw this just a couple of times. It's, it's not as common, but uh, people can have this term, this uh, situation, which is called hemochromatosis. And that basically means there's too much iron in the blood. And in some of those cases, there's certain medications that you can't take. You definitely don't want to take iron supplements because that's just adding on top of having too much. So again, that is one of the reasons why it's very, very important for you to talk with your doctor, with your dietitian, with your healthcare team to find out really what's going on for your situation. And then from there is when you can assess what the best next step is rather than just saying, my number's low, I must do this or anything like that. Yeah. And one thing I have learned and made a point of is when I need something, can I get it from food instead of popping an extra pill? I don't want any extra things if I can go and enjoy an apple or something else and get what I'm needing. Now, when it comes yeah. to food, there's more than one type of iron though, right? Yes. Yes, there is. There's actually two types and um, they're fairly easy uh, to, to think about. They're not too creative. There's heme iron and there's non-heme iron. So it's heme or it's not heme. <laughs> there we go. Uh, very, very creative, right? So the heme iron, this is more the more common type. Um, this is actually more absorbed. This kind of iron is found in our animal products. So if you think about heme, that root, that root word means blood. So think of animals. Animals also have blood. They also have blood flow. So the iron there is heme iron. This type of iron is absorbed better. It's absorbed about 15 to 35% um, from the food that we get in there. So it has, it doesn't sound like it's high, but the non heme iron, which is, this is a type of iron that is not from animal sources. Although animal sources will also have some non heme, they'll have heme and non heme. The non heme iron is absorbed by about two to 20%. So it's lower in general compared to that heme that's 15 to 35 but there are tons and tons and tons of non-heme iron foods that the general healthy diet, which again, even for plant-powered kidneys, we talk about including more fruits and vegetables as that solid foundation. All of these different plants will provide more variety and overall more of that non-heme iron, even though it's not the heme, if that makes sense. <laughs> Heme, non-heme, oh my goodness. <laughs> I know, I know. Luckily, Clear I as eat mud. a variety. 
and it was able to take care of it. Yeah, that's exactly it. Now, now what are yeah. some of the iron rich foods that if I'm suffering from not getting enough iron in my diet and I'm either worried about developing anemia or I've already developed it, what are some of these iron rich foods I could look at incorporating into my diet? Yes. So first of all, the heme sources, again, we'll go through some of the animal products. And um, again, at Plant Powered Kidneys, a lot of people benefit from a totally like a vegan plant-based diet, but some people do include animal products. Everybody's different. So I do want to preface that when I cover a lot of these foods, we're purely talking about where this nutrient is found, not saying what people should or shouldn't have. But animal meats, of course, are going to be the highest source of the heme iron because they have that blood source, they have that availability. So we're talking about your poultry, your chicken, your turkey, we're talking about beef and lamb and ham and pork and veal, liverwurst, uh, liver, those are those meat sources of iron. And then you also have your seafood. So they also have the heme sources of iron and that's, you know, tuna and um, sardines, haddock, mackerel, shrimp, scallops, all the, the shellfish. So these are going to be another source of that animal meat heme. Um, eggs as well, they're an animal product. So they're not, I mean, they're, they're animal. So it's an animal slash animal product. Eggs also have iron. And actually just one large egg will give you just under a milligram of iron. So if you are on a vegetarian diet, if you need more protein, then maybe eggs could be something to include. But again, this group that this category I'm talking about, this heme iron group of all animal meats, these are all also high in protein. So if you are somebody in an earlier stage of CKD, or even late stage, not on dialysis, you may need to limit your animal products. Or I, I would highly, highly recommend to most everybody to be careful with their animal products in their diet because they're so high in protein. And protein, as we've talked about before, is one of, I mean, it's the hardest macronutrient for, um, of the three macronutrients. It's the hardest one for the kidneys to be digesting and taking care of. So these heme rich foods, while they do provide that heme iron, they're also providing protein. So you really want to think about that. If you're on dialysis and you do need more protein, then this might be something that you can include. Yeah. Now, what about, you know, I'm, you know, someone like me, when I first started, mm -hmm. I was trying to wean myself off or wean myself down on meat. I was the steak and potato guys with all the junk on the potato, the bacon and cheese and like a thousand calories on the potato. Um, and I started working on more vegetables. And actually that was the one thing that really helped me the most personally was the vegetables because there was so much variety. Can you talk mm -hmm. about which vegetables are good that contain iron? Yeah, there are some good sources for vegetables with iron. Again, it's non-heme, but when we're including more plants, you're including more variety, you're including more. So uh, some specific examples, and I do have some pictures. I don't know if you saw them, James, if, if you oh, wanted yeah. to Let pull them up. Let me bring it up. Okay. So I'll, say, I'll cover them in the meantime. Oh, there you go. Okay. So we've got the I spinach. I need to zoom them in a little. Has... Let, me, let me make them a little bigger. There we go. Zoom in. Okay. <laughs> there we go. So we've got the spinach, which is 0.7 milligrams of iron. We've got broccoli, also 0.7 milligrams of iron. We have the collards, 0.2 milligrams. We have the cabbage mm. at 0.7. This is one of my favorites, cabbage. It can fit Oh, yeah, anything. cabbage is so good. It's so good. And I love the different colors of it. It's mm -hmm. really, really a fantastic option. Um, we have the kale and the mushrooms each, both around 0.4 milligrams. So there are some greens right there that we have specific numbers on. Other ones, if you scroll down a little bit lower, we have our whole other longer list of iron rich that. foods and for yeah, anyone so wondering these... this is the blog post on plantpoweredkidneys.com if you go there yep. there's the blog post with all this and there's even some downloadable things you'll want um, related yes. to this yes exactly so there are plenty of vegetables in here so depending on 
your situation and your preferences. I always take preferences into mind with my clients. I, just because spinach is a good source of iron, if you don't like spinach, don't worry about adding it. We can find other ways. Maybe you are a big broccoli fan like I am, or maybe Brussels sprouts are your thing. Like, I, I can't say, I, I don't think I don't like any of these, so I'm probably a bad example, but. <laughs> but I can, I can skimp something... on the kale. I don't need much kale. It's too powerful okay. for me. Everything okay. else is so, great yeah. on here, except there seaweed. My so daughter loves it, but not it. me. <laughs> ah, okay. So yeah, you don't have to have all of these, but it gives you some options of the variety and showing you that all these green leafy foods, all these vegetables are great options for you to be able to include in your diet, knowing that you're getting some more iron in there. So these I think are very doable. And it just depends on your own preferences and what you would like to do in fitting these into your own renal diet. Yeah, awesome. And yeah, just so much variety. And for me, the thing I did was stir fry. First of all, it was the first mm -hmm. thing I learned how to cook because you can't mess it up unless you burn it. Just keep moving it. And when it's, <laughs> when it's getting right. kind of soft, you're done. You can turn down the yep. heat and take it off and eat it. Add some spices or maybe even make up a little sauce. Mm -hmm. um, I just mixed a lot of these things. And then I also cooked in a cast iron pot, which gives a little, just a little extra iron. It's not measurable, mm -hmm. but it's a little extra that might help my body get it. Mm, I love veggies. Now, what about fruits? Another great category. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, there's vegetables and there's also fruits. And for the iron rich fruits, some of them will kind of surprise you, I would say. Um, but the the fruits that are easier for me to remember are the dried fruits. Dried fruits are very nutrient dense. A little goes a long way. So there's the list right there you pulled up. If you scroll down a little bit more, there is another graphic oh, another that picture. shows you. Yeah. So um, Shelby's amazing. Some of you have chatted with Shelby. She is a dietitian that helps me with getting some of these graphics put together after I get all the, the details out. And next week so, she'll be on here. Yes. 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 She'll be well, chatting with you guys next week. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, here are some of the fruits that are higher in iron. And personally, I, I think I triple checked when I saw watermelon come up. I was like, I don't, it's just not something that I typically hear the dried fruits. Yes. But the watermelon threw me for a little bit of a loop. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I I love water. I grew up on watermelon, but with salt. So I I now have to be very careful. I eat very little of it because I'll just eat a whole watermelon. And there's a lot of fiber in an entire melon. Yeah, yeah. Watermelon <laughs> is kidney friendly, just for the record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, these um, look, I can't I believe say, how high it is in raisins. That's fantastic. Yeah. I like to add those to oatmeal. Yeah, I will say like a cup of raisins. That's a lot of raisins oh, wow. to have. And that would be yeah. really, really high in potassium. So that that is something that is a balancing act for adding something like dried fruit to your diet is the amount. If you're going to do that and add all that iron, you're also adding a ton of potassium, dried fruit and potassium. It's very, very high. So keep that in mind. Um, figs, if you like raisins, you might like figs. Have you ever tried a fig, James? I have never, except for a fig Newton, which is just a cookie that I don't even know there's a real fig in it. <laughs> I'm sure there is because I've had that and I've had a fig and I, I can taste the similarities. So uh -huh. the positive person in me wants to believe that there is. But I, to be honest, I haven't read the labels on a, a fig Newton for a long time. <laughs> Yeah, I, so, the fig, I don't know how much, a oh, one fig, I don't know how big a fig is. They're like, I would say the size of a golf ball. That's that's uh -huh. probably, I just had figs this weekend, so I'm, I'm uh, they're fresh in my mind. Interesting. Yeah, and then the dates, yeah. are, I love, I love dates because of how sweet they are. I like to use them as a sweetener in things. Yes, they they are a great way to sweeten smoothies and oatmeal and all kinds of stuff. Very, very good. 
Um, so yeah, there are some options when it comes to fruit that those will help with adding iron. But again, a little goes a long way. You don't have to have a ton and your diet isn't going to be, it should not be solely focused on fruit. So you'll have some of these fruits, you'll have some of the vegetables, even beans and legumes. That's another oh, area. I just saw so, that. Yeah. So these are another, yep. These are another area of iron rich foods that are still kidney friendly, which is fantastic. So, and they have my um, favorite fiber. Yes, exactly. Yes. So there's a lot of benefits to adding beans and legumes into your diet. And this is just one of those, uh, one of those features of the beans and legumes that provide all these nutrients. So you don't have to have a ton. It doesn't have to be every single meal all the time. You can just incorporate them a few times a week. Um, try to do something like a meatless Monday. If you're working on transitioning away from animal products, just pick one meal um, that you typically have meats and sub in something like tofu or lentils. Um, lentils are a great substitution for something like ground meat. You could do black beans or the chickpeas, tons and tons of different options. So this is another source of iron for the diet that again, it's not going to, it's not, it doesn't have to be the full hundred percent because no food should be reaching the full percent of our nutritional needs. We're all about variety. So that's another thing to remember when we're looking at these numbers and looking at adding more things to the diet. Wow, I love the chickpeas around there. I love making my own hummus here at home with those. Me too. Oh, that's my favorite. I'm going to make, I think I'm going to make some buffalo hummus because I've been, I've been craving more of it. So that's something that I'm, I'm going to, we're going to be talking yeah. about food. I haven't had dinner yet. Oh my gosh. Woody even <laughs> said hummus made with chickpeas. Like, yes, yes, yes. And I like to add either exactly. garlic or some roasted red peppers, all sorts of, I just, it's one of those things that it's like tofu. It absorbs flavor and yep. oh, you could do so much with and it. And it's, it's a great excuse to, it's a great excuse to use veggies to dip it in. So, I mean, it's, it's you add more flavor there as well. And yeah. I just saw um, I saw Patricia's comment. Yes, about I was going to bring that up. High. Yeah. yeah. So this is something that you do want to be aware of. But the fiber that James is talking about, the fiber that is so good for us helps with healthy bowel movements and that helps keep potassium regulated. There are beans that are lower in potassium. So there are some options that are maybe better for you that you can look at. Chickpeas is one of those kinds that are lower in potassium. So if you have potassium issues, if you do need to control your potassium, that would be something to keep in mind. But just because you, just because you have kidney issues doesn't mean you can't have potassium, doesn't mean you should be following a low potassium diet. That is a very individualized dietary restriction that should come from directly from your doctor. Honestly, ideally from your dietitian, just to review the information, review the diet and talk more about that. Um, because the newer, the newer research is showing that it is way too highly individualized and over prescribed over recommended. So, um, yeah, and don't I was assume one of those people who had to eat a higher potassium diet. So don't just assume that you mm -hmm. need to go low potassium, your doctor will let you know, or your dietitian, mm -hmm. someone who knows your health records. That's who's going to tell exactly. you if you need to cut back. Exactly. And then yes. I see we've also got seeds in here. Yes, these are a great source of iron. These are actually quite high in iron, and the serving size with nuts and seeds is usually about one ounce or even a couple tablespoons. So you really want to think of the nuts and seeds category as like a garnish, but you can put them on top of yogurt. You can put them on top of your salad. You can add them to your oatmeal, all sorts of places. You can just do a sprinkle of nuts or seeds, whichever kind you like, and that will give a sprinkle of extra iron boost to your diet. So plus it gives more fiber. It gives a nice texture variation, tons of benefits to adding a little bit of nuts. Same thing applies for the nuts as the uh, beans does with the, well, actually with the side potassium and phosphorus, that these aren't going to be really high concerns necessarily if you aren't overindulging, 
if you're if you're using them the way that they should be used in the diet. Um, and if you're talking with your healthcare team about what you should be focusing on. Yeah, and I loved sprinkling a small amount of seeds in my stir fry or in my salad just to give mm -hmm. a crunch. And Treva mm -hmm. asked, James, did you get the EPO shots? I did not get any EPO shots. I got my anemia under control all through diets. No supplements. Um, I didn't want to take iron supplements. My doctor said I could in the beginning. I was like, no, no, let's let's try to just get it through food. I didn't. I was worried about constipation. I had a bad mm -hmm. experience a long time ago um, <laughs> after liposuction, liposuction surgery and taking the pain kills pills for that, and it it uh, mm -hmm. it caused. It, it caused a very bad experience with constipation. Yeah. I never want to go there again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's not something people are excited to uh, relive. So, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I, see I would say if you, if you are somebody that is um, – that is on an iron supplement, and this is just for the audience watching, uh, make sure that you talk with your doctor if you are experiencing any GI side effect, if you are experiencing constipation, because there are types of iron supplements that can be a better option, but you have to kind of press for it and you do have to be your own advocate. So if you don't say anything, and if you just assume that the side effect is what it is and you can't do anything about it, they're not gonna. They're not gonna be able to do anything for you. So you've got to speak up, tell them you're experiencing constipation, and really say, "I, I would like to try a different iron supplement." And um, because the number one type of iron supplement that is recommended is typically that it typically has that side effect of constipation, which is why so many people say, "Oh, it's just gonna. That's just gonna happen." But it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be like. You, yep. I mean, I do this all the time with my clients. I go through their medications and I'm like, okay, this one we've got to keep an eye on and this one we're going to look to come off. And so you, you can definitely make changes, but you have to speak up about it because otherwise change won't happen. Yep. Now I'm, I'm going through the blog and this is my first time actually going through it in detail. I am surprised to see the grains are on here that they have iron. Yeah, yeah. So there are good grains that do include iron. And one of the um, big groups is the cereals. There's a lot of fortified mm -hmm. or enriched oh, yeah, cereals. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so I, I just took the whole thing because if you look up, there's there's dozens of them. Um, and then the fortified or enriched rice, even white rice, if it's enriched white rice, it does have some of that added iron to it. So um, make sure you're checking. And most of those types, they're more than not, they're enriched anyway for like the white rice or something. Um, but you have a lot of your ancient grains you have. And there was one that I saw that I've never tried before. I don't think I've seen it before. And it was called Phonio, F-O-N-I-O. -O. I've never back. heard of it. So. Yeah, I had never heard of that either. Whoops. I was just looking up how much iron is in purple <laughs> rice because I love purple rice. It's got yeah. fiber. Look at that. Got, got some yeah. fiber in it. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, I love It's a Korean thing from going over there all the time. But there's that mm -hmm. one, Phonia. Phonio. Yeah. Never heard of it. Yeah. So I came across it in the research and now, now it's uh, something new for me to go try and play around with a little bit more. Um, but a lot of grains do have the iron in them. So it's going to be something, again, the benefits of adding more of these plant, the, of these plant foods to your diet, you, you will be getting iron in there. So it's just a matter of having that variation and um, including maybe some things that are, you're not as familiar with, but just trying something new. Yeah, and then I see we got herbs and spice. I never even thought that they could have iron. I always think of them as being so light and so little that mm -hmm. there could be some iron in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even herbs and spices. And the one that was, I think, the most surprising to me was thyme. Thyme has, in a teaspoon of thyme, it has 1.2 milligrams of iron. Whoa, so, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of iron. So if you do, let's say you do meal prepping. I love thyme on vegetables. I love thyme in general. So 
I will toss my chopped up veggies with a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt and pepper and a lot of thyme. And it's so, so good. And then I just roast it like that. And I've got my roasted vegetables that I use for my grain bowls. I use them for my salads. I use them as a side. I'll toss them with like a different kind of vinegar dressing or something to add in there, or I just have them as is. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, you can put them in a wrap. Oh, it's so good. I'm hungry. <laughs> it's funny. I probably have like 80% of these now in my um, kitchen. And before mm -hmm. I had none of these, none of them. Now I have almost all of these. <laughs> nice. Very, very nice. It's, and yeah, I don't know how to use them. And... I just start mixing a little bit. I'm like, oh, I love a little of this yeah. or a little more of this. And exactly. if it tastes good, I try to remember what I just did. I'm really bad at not mm -hmm. writing it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That can be, that can definitely be a challenge. Maybe it's something in the future. I'll work on getting like a spice guide together Ooh. to help out with some pairings. Oh, that would be great. Now let's see what else do we have. So there's, there are some other iron rich foods I and mean, we just covered a whole bunch of them, but what are some of the other ones that we, we may, um, Oh, I know one that I'm thinking it's a sweet one or it's not sweet for me. My wife loves yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's powerful. Dark chocolate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dark chocolate. That one works. So it just depends. You've got to make sure it's like good, legit dark chocolate and it's not, um, it doesn't have too much sugar into it because we don't want to offset something that provides some benefit. But dark chocolate does have iron some other foods and maybe um i know there's a little bit of a delay for the live but if you if people in the comments want to say i know there's a condiment out there that many of you are familiar with because i see you talk about it in the plant powered kidneys facebook group so what is something that you add to let's say your oatmeal to um give it some more iron and let's just see if we uh have any takers on that but in the meantime um in the meantime, coconut milk is another source of iron. So that can be something, well, even so you could do, you could add that to your oats as well. But coconut milk is another source of iron. So yep. that is also kidney friendly. And you can include that in your cooking in any kind of meal there. And while we're waiting to see if anyone does it, because there's about a 30 second delay between us talking and them hearing it, and then we got to give them time to talk or time to type. Mm -hmm. um, Helen asked, can I get a printable list? Could she download a list of these foods that you're covering? Yes. Yes. Actually, oh, yeah. on the blog, yeah, on the blog, I do have a way that we can email the list to you. And it's a printable PDF. It's a one page PDF um, that you can go to the blog at plantpoweredkidneys.com slash, what is it, iron dash, you, well, you have the full URL. I just click <laughs> I blog. Just I just go to plantpoweredkidneys.com, click blog, and then boom, the latest uh -huh. one is there, which is the mm -hmm. one we're talking about right now. And then you can yep. always search. You can type in whatever you want. You can always you want search. And get all sorts of great information. Yeah. So if even, let's say you're, let's say you're watching this like two weeks later and it's not right there at the top. Um, you can just search iron and you'll have, you'll see the article come up, the iron rich foods. And in there, there is a printable iron rich foods list that you can download. Um, and then I also, I know I'm running short on time. Um, I also have some more tips on how you can help with absorption of the iron. So it's not, it's not just one thing to eat the iron. There are some things you want to do and some things you don't want to do in order for your body to get the iron into your bloodstream. So um, those are gonna be on the article as well. You can follow those tips and recommendations. One of you, one of them you mentioned, James, which was the cast iron. Oh yeah. Cast iron is, it's that such and includes a something with tool. a little vitamin C and boom, I was, I was good. Now we did get so, answers. We got okay. Carolyn saying cinnamon. We got another mm. cinnamon. We got even another cinnamon. We got another cinnamon. <laughs> I don't know what you were looking for. We did get a honey. <laughs> oh, wow. I was not thinking cinnamon. Cinnamon does have, but it's per tablespoon. Let me say per teaspoon, 0.2 milligrams. So cinnamon does have iron. 
Um, I was going for blackstrap molasses. So that is something, it's a specific type of molasses and it does have a fairly powerful uh, taste to it. But a tablespoon of blackstrap molasses gives you just under a milligram of iron. So I will have clients oftentimes add this to their oatmeal. Um, I have clients that make um, these like energy balls and they add the blackstrap molasses into that recipe. You can also add cinnamon to that. That would be really good. You could add cinnamon to the oatmeal as well. Um, but that that is one that is kind of like specific, but also common is blackstrap molasses. Um, so yeah, that's what I was going for. But the cinnamon, that was a really lovely curveball. I like that. I so. love cinnamon. <laughs> now, before we run out of time, because we are getting close to the end, on your mm -hmm. blog, there is an anemia diet plan. Yes. Can you tell us about yes. that? Another reason to go to the blog. Yeah, so I did just from, you know, we've talked about all these different kinds of foods, and then there are the tips of what you should eat or avoid with your meals when you're working on increasing your iron. So in the anemia diet plan, I've shown what a breakfast looks like, what a lunch looks like, what a snack looks like, actually two snacks, and dinner, how that all comes together. And it's really not complicated. They're very simple meals that have just a few ingredients, honestly. Um, yeah, I'm just kind of reviewing it again because I wrote it now, up last week. I could week, easily so. get through a day with this, um, mm -hmm. except for the dinner. I'd replace the mushrooms with something else. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm good. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> not, you don't have to like everything. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm still not on board with mushrooms. You have taught me so much from... The, uh, the brewer's yeast, uh, so many different things. Uh, jackfruit, and I just had a, a cousin of mine. I told her all about jackfruit. She's vegan and was mm -hmm. looking for some kind of substitute for, for meat um, that wasn't yeah. high in sodium. And I said, try it. Have you eaten jackfruit? And she's like, no. I'm like, oh, my goodness. It's incredible. <laughs> like, well, let me tell you. <laughs> exactly. Um. So we're pretty much coming to the top of our time here. Now, there were a couple questions. So what we've discussed is how to eat to add more iron, especially for those that, mm -hmm. especially helpful for those that are low on iron, which is a common thing with kidney disease. Now, when it comes to anemia, you're not always low on iron, correct? Right. And, and that's where... That's where it's really important to talk with your healthcare professionals about what, where all of your levels are, what your numbers mean, what your anemia means, like basically kind of getting down to that root situation for yourself of figuring out what's going on. Because if you just kind of start throwing a lot of supplements, you start throwing things at yourself of thinking that that's going to help. It may be a waste of money. It may be a waste of time if it's not properly diagnosed and reviewed with you. So make sure you understand what exactly is going on with your anemia because of the different kinds. Yep. And then someone had mentioned the lucky iron fish. Yes. If you don't have yeah. the gigantic heavy cast iron pots, that lucky iron fish is something you can put in there. Add a little bit mm -hmm. of iron. It's not going to give you all mm -hmm. you need, but Hey, every little bit helps. Um, it helps you get it. Yeah. 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 Actually, so when I was looking into when I was reviewing it again, um, let's see, setting it into your food for 10 minutes will release six to eight milligrams of iron. Whoa, that's a lot. Wow. So it's a pretty it's a pretty solid amount. Yeah. Um, they do show that you need to use it consistently. So that is key. It's not just like a one and done kind of thing. They mm -hmm. they the research on it showed that using it at least three times per week would help with increasing iron stores. Um, so you do want to use it more consistently, but it is something that we recommend quite often to help people with not even making changes to the food, just making changes to the cooking of dropping that in. And they also have instructions on how you can use it for your water as well. So it's, it's a very functional kitchen tool uh, to help with your iron levels. Awesome. All right. Now I know you have a call coming up and we're not going to keep you over. Mm -hmm. um, I want to remind everyone again, if you'd like to participate in that study for people in the U S stage four and five, the other requirements 
are listed on the website page, davicetv.com slash study. They'll give you 125 bucks to do the interview with them, which is a great way to make a little bit of extra money, pay for uh, some good veggies and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Also, don't forget to go to plantpoweredkitties.com, the entire blog that we cover with all those downloadable lists. Um, an example of a, a, a meal for the day, everything you need to eat, that and so much more all in there. All right, everybody, that takes us to the end for this week. No more videos this week that are planned. Next week, Jen won't be here. We get Shelby from Plant Powered Kitty. Yeah. So we're going to meet someone new. Get to talk to I'm her. I'm so excited questions. for you guys to meet her. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. And I will see you next week in the next video. Bye, everyone. <laughs>